Paper Craft Society box, my very first Paper Craft Society box. Um, what this is all about, this is about education. I am all over, and I always have been and always will be, about the education. Even when I'm promoting a product on TV, I'm, I'm, um, it's just obviously a shop and telly, so you know they're selling you a product. Whenever I'm on there and I'm presenting you with a product, I'm presenting it in a, um, hopefully, an informative fashion. It's teaching you about the product. So if you know about the product, if you understand it, then you make a considered decision on whether you want it or not. And this Paper Craft Society box is all about education. So the theory, my theory is, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. And this is all about, if you imagine fish as colouring, then hopefully this little box of wonderment will teach you how to get comfortable and efficient and happy with colouring. Watercolour is the medium, watercolour ink, but it's about really colouring uh, primarily. Feeling comfortable with paint and then also techniques with that paint. So, wow, how cool is that? It's a box. It's me. It's me in box form. I am. Ah, oh, scary. Prepare yourselves. So what you're going to get is you're going to get the booklet. Now, this booklet is really, um, it's full and full and full of information and education. So, for example, we're going to, we'll do a little colouring in of the colour chart as well. And we're going to be doing lots of demonstrations. But this is the, the crafting the foundation. So this here is something I put together. And I just brain dumped everything I could think of. Everything you need to know about paint in general. Because I'm figuring, again, it's not about the specific what's in the box. It's about all your stuff colouring colouring products going forward, not just the contents of the box. I could have made it just pretty things, that you make lots of pretty things with what's in the box, but it's about hopefully empowering you going forward beyond this um, box. So there's things like how I set things up, kitchen paper as an essential, white gouache, drawing gum, about that, and masking fluid, things like a spray bottle, obviously glycerin, sponges, and then there's lots of inspiration, the team, um, have been have created some fabulous cards for you including yours truly for fabulous inspiration look at that these are things you can make with the products with the contents of this box so let us show you what is in the box so that's that's all full of information and um and advice now in here we have the wallet i love the wallet let me put the box to one side and then we'll come back to what else is in there so I just love these, aren't they? Just so well presented. Um, so in here, we have a plethora of wonderment. This maybe here is the colour chart. So before you do anything, I think the most important thing to do is to know how to mix the colours because you don't need a million and one colours. You just need three colours to start with. And once you can mix skin tones with three absolutely crazy colours, then you know you're empowered to do anything. So that's that well within the crafting. I don't mean anything. You haven't become a superhero. Don't take it that far. You know, bring it back. Anything to do with colouring. So we'll pop that in there. That's to a colour mixing chart. So that's that's an exercise, but it's also a reference. You also get these fabulous silhouette stamps. Now I love a silhouette stamp. One of my most successful stamp sets um, of 2021 was a silhouette stamp. Um, similar to this where you've got a horizon line because if you've got a good horizon line you're going to mix all kinds of fabulous fun backgrounds and then give it contents by just popping over a silhouette stamp fabulous you've got a card so you've got different themes we've got a wintery tree theme you've got a summery kind of um uh kind of a uh, spring type uh grasses um wildflower scene little baby things there to go in there with the, the the geese or the, the the flying um birds you've got summer and you've got little ele extra elements these are separate you can pop in there as well and you've got a fabulous coastal scene here with again extra elements just to pop in there and also really empowering cool words happy days ahead come on of course things like have a happy retirement good luck with pastures new you're the lighthouse in my storm. Shine, it's your birthday. Congratulations, it's your time to shine. Like a wildflower bloom anywhere and everywhere. Good luck on good luck with pastures new. So all of those things there are included. Silhouette stamps, love them. Now, what else is in here? Again, because it's all about education, 
we've got these little guys here. I'm going to explain what these are in a sec. We'll leave those out and we'll, we'll come back to them. Um, so we'll unpack those separately. Let's pop that to one side and then continue with what else is in the box. So that's the wallet. Back to the box. And we have... Ooh, we've got... It's becoming a, it, it's a chemist. You've got a mixing palette. Absolutely fabulous and essential. So we've got a mixing palette. We'll pop that to one side. You've got a brush because you're going to need a brush. And this is a really nice soft brush for washers. A lot of us have got a round brush like this. Um, if, you, if you're a paper crafter, I bet you've already got one of them. You might not have a flat wash brush. So that's why we've included that one. Because it puts a larger um, amount of colour in a more even fashion. These little, what's this all about? Ooh, you have three inks. Three little bottles of Wonderment. Now these are small bottles, but they go a long way. So I love the little paper craft society, little logo on them. So you have three. You've got a magenta, you've got a cyan, and you've got a yellow in there. And that's what's going to allow us to mix. So we're going to pop them there. We'll come back to those in a minute. You have three pipettes because the stuff in there, you're going to want a way to get them out in a measurable way to mix, which we're going to come back to. And then you also have these. So I'm going to pop the box back, shut there, and I'm going to explain in more detail what these are so these are recipe cards so what you'll find is in here you've got jump rings you've got a couple of jump rings so let's take these out so you know when one of the best things i ever did and one of the things i mean we all know and love ranger if you've used distress inks which if you're a paper crafter likely you have you know what an amazing company they are now what I did many, many years ago was I actually went to New Jersey and the most valuable thing to, to become a, um, an educator for Ranger and one of the most valuable things we came away with was a series of tags with techniques, but we had to make our own tags. But what I've done here is we've made them for you. I've made them for you. I have produced all of these effects on here for you to take it forward to um, pop in a little recipe. So this is your reference. Because you know, a lot of the time, it's not what you know, it's what you forget. When you come to do a card, it's like, oh, I forgot I haven't used that technique in ages. So this is what this is all about. Let's look at the cover and go, oh, that's, yeah, that's cool. I like that. What's that? And how's she done that? And, oh, blending with glycerin. How's she done it? Oh, there's your recipe. Fantastic. Now, what's looking at what's in here? We'll continue because it's not just about what I've done. This is all about doing stuff yourself. So you might think that all these little tags here are backgrounds so that you can apply any of those techniques with context. So any of these printouts, these little pre-printed images, you can apply any of those techniques to see how they actually look in the real world. But you can also make cards with them. I know I'm jumping around a bit, it'll all become clear in a sec, so let me explain. So if you look at that, that's been made with one of the tags, that card there. So you can use them as little um, technique tags, or you can use them as a final finished um, piece of art. That's done with a tag. So the thing is, is we've got um, in the book how to use and how to get the maximum use out of all this stuff in here. So say I think, oh, blending with glycerin. That would look pretty cool with that technique. I bet that would look cool with those flowers there. Mm. Okay, I'm going to do that with that. And also, I might just do a plain background and change the colours. What do they look like with colours? Douglas has used a lot of warm colours here. What about if I use some cool colours and I want to create a background like that? Okay, I'll pop that in there as well. So that there and that there can then go in your little recipe book because remember it's we're doing the teacher person to fish as in be a colour meister be happy with colouring and not fear it so then you're going to colour these in you're going to make your own notes on the back and then you can pop them there with the rest of your recipe cards so now it's become personal to you that's the recipe that's how to do it this is an example of how it looks like that. And this is maybe another example of different colourway. You're going to put your own notes on there saying, mm, notice that I use a little bit too much glycerin that time, use a bit less. Yeah, things like that. Then there's another recipe card. We'll not go through them all, but wow, what's this about for bleaching? Oh, how do you do that then? Well, tells you on the back. And then, wow, 
Cool, love it. And all these colours are from this kit, by the way. You're going to get vibrant colours if you want. Kitchen sponge, yay. We've got salt. We've got lots of things in here. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave some mystery for you. But all of these are techniques and all of these, this is a, this is a recipe book. This for me is so useful because this is something you'll have sat on your desk using it all the time. That to me is the biggest value as Learn how to do it, learn the theory, but then use it, use it, keep it out there and use it. And that will be, get bigger and thicker and you'll have your own techniques. You'll add a new technique to a blank tag and you'll add it in there. There'll be something that you've just, you've just found or you've just discovered. It could be techniques with other, with other, other mediums. It could be pencils and watercolours. Then you'll add that in there as well. And that there is your personal, have it with you bank of wonderment and reference so if you think what am i going to do with this card oh yeah i forgot i love that technique yeah we'll do that that'll look cool or um oh yeah i forgot about that about the cling film and oh that is the salt as well yeah i forgot about the salt thing that's what that's all about so that's what the tags are there um and they go to one set i should mention a little bit more about these before i will do a little practical thing together um this is your color mixing pot this is how you're going to get those colours into that pot. And that's it. You've got a little pipette for each colour, which is what you're going to need. I think that's hopefully given you an exa uh, um, explanation of what's in the, um, in the um, collection. And next thing is to do something practical. Okay, fabulous. All right, so let's pop these to one side. And let's start on a practical mission. So the practical mission will be, let's colour in this colour chart here. So we don't need anything else in there. We'll pop that to one side. We'll take this out now. In the book, in the instruction book, you'll see there's a little, a little guide as to how to do this. But this is easier if you just watch this video. And hopefully it will become apparent and crystal clear. So, talking through this, you've got yellow, big Y to see. Wait, that's yellow. Cyan, which is the blue colour, and M, which is magenta, which is the pink colour. All right? And basically, how it's going to work, we're going to colour in pure colour like this, and we're going to do a little bit stronger at the top and a little bit less with water towards the centre. So you've got the strongest to the lightest towards the middle. But in between, it says, oh, you're going to mix green by one drop of yellow, one drop of cyan. Okay, and then we're gonna get green. But then we're gonna vary it slightly around the edge. We're gonna get more yellowy green and we're gonna get a more bluey green in between. And that's just the start of all those variations that you're gonna get in between each one. It'll become clearer when we start playing. So we need the we need the little mixing chart. We need our colours. We do need a water container. So get a large clean water container because when you're mixing colours, you're going to, preferably two is even better. So let me bring that in a little bit more so you can see I've got a big thing of water here. Right, so the first thing to do is to decant these colours. So carefully just take off the top of your little jars of wonderment. And you see I've got a little stopper in there. And drop, get in the pipette some colour. Now we're going to start, we'll say one drop. Let's just do one drop. And look, I'm going to leave that in there. If you if you pull back up with the pipette, you'll find that the liquid will stay in there. It's all like chemistry back in school, but in a lovely, colourful, pretty way. So make sure you pop that stopper on there. Store these in a dark place because then they're going to stay fresher longer. And that's why you'll find when certain colouring products are in a darker jar because obviously light isn't a good thing for colouring products. So, right, that's that one. We're going to do the same with the magenta now. So we'll put one drop in there. But then if you squeeze back, look, it's not going anywhere. I'll bring that in shot, sorry. Yeah, you can see, it's fine. It's all right. It's not splodging out because the air is keeping it in. How cool is that? Now, we're not going to use all of that. We're going to put a lot of it back in here. But you'll see how, um, how far this goes by doing this. So next one, same deal. Take the little stopper out. There you go. And then one drop 
one drop just one full drop and then when you let go the air is going to keep that in there for you and you can clearly see there your little tools that you're going to play with i think that is just super cool those lids go back on and they safely go somewhere out of the way so you're not going to spill anything now you've got this purple brush here that came with the set which is a fabulous brush for doing your washes and things like that now you can use that for the color mixing chart but i would just grab yourself one of your round brushes which i'm sure you've got this will this will still suffice but it's easier with the smaller brush so what you always do with any watercolors you're always going to wet the brush then dry it then we're going to start with yellow and we're going to pick up some yellow and we're going to just do that and it's a very orangey yellow and that's fine because it's going to give us some really nice mellow but also vibrant mixing in there too so color in the top of your little um, petal like this now i've added some water and i'm dragging it down and i'm going to add a little bit more water and i'm going to start at the base and just drag it up and now i have the representation of my first petal yeah yellow plenty of water dry your brush let's do the magenta next which is the the pinky color and we'll do the same there look at how gorgeous and strong and vibrant this is this is why you don't need huge gallons of this stuff you're going to get a lot of projects out of the ink that's in this kit because they're so concentrated so now add some water and just blend it. I'm just using little circles and just to, to drag that down to, to pull some of the colour down. And then I want hardly any water at the bottom. So now you can see this is how you get your pastels. You've got your strong colours and then you've got your pastel colours at the bottom. Clean the brush, dry it, pick up your cyan now, and then go ahead and colour like this. Same deal, same thing. Just get that cyan nice and see how we can go over there and, and just let the cord. And obviously different cord, when you come to play with these, you'll notice that different cord matters. So you want a nice cord that, uh, you know, ideally watercolour cord is, is why it's called watercolour cord. It's designed to work nicely with a water-based medium. And these being a water-based medium work great with any cord that's specified for watercolour. Right, now what we're going to do now, so we've got the pure colours. Now... I'm not going to worry about the amount I've taken out of there because I've hardly even made a dent with those drops. So they are pure colours. So if we look in between here, we've got green, okay, which is one cyan to one yellow, okay? So there's the cyan. Let's pop one yellow in that. We've got one drop, right? That's the absolute mid-green. So we'll mix a green with that and see what we've got. Hey, look at that. It's like magic. So you've got a measurable way of knowing exactly how much. Now, the other thing to mention, if you've mixed these up and you're going, well, I've got loads of it, Sheena, I see what you mean about it going a long way. What am I going to do with it? Don't worry. It'll re-wet. If it dries in your little plastic palette, don't, don't wash it up. Leave it. Use it. Use it tomorrow. It'll be great. Right. So we've done green there. So we've got purple, which is one magenta to one cyan. So we've got magenta here, so let's do the cyan, which is this blue, okay? So we'll pop one magenta in there, in the, like that, and we'll give it a swoosh. Now we should get a really pretty purple. Oh, ooh, a lovely purple. Nice. Purples are sometimes a bit tricky if you've got the wrong kind of red. You know, you've got warm reds, cool reds, we'll talk about that as well. Um, in the thing but if you've got the you know the just the two colors even though it's it's a red and a blue they might not be the right kind of red and blue that play nice together but this is a lovely purple so that's mixed beautifully look how gorgeous that you've got three little those three little jars look how much paint we've got left and then finally we've got orange which is one magenta to one yellow and we've got a yellow left in the pot so we'll do one drop there in there and we'll swoosh that and we should get wow i love that that's more like it's bordering on scarlet it's really weird how you can make a, a warm red with this pinky magenta color i just love that look at how vibrant that is isn't that gorgeous so look already you've got a little mixing palette so you could leave if you wouldn't to start playing you could just have your your primary and your secondary color so you could have your 
You could have left those first drops as they were and then have these mixed as your secondary colours. So, oh, got a bit of water on there. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to look at how you can affect these and make them even like more. So, right, you've got your, in fact, let me put some pure colour out here again. Let's, let's just do another drop of pure colour because we might just do littler, little uh, versions of what we've been playing with. Um, we'll put the red in the middle. Oh, I did two drops. That's okay. That's okay because we're not going to measure by drops for this one. We're going to measure by tiny little touches on the brush. So let me show you what I mean. So if we say we've got this one, this green was um, one cyan to one yellow, what would two yellow to one cyan be? So if we did um, that little drop of yellow, it's not as precise unless you want to drop the drops in again. But for example, we'll put one, two yellow to one cyan. So to give that less of a... Um, I've picked up the wrong colour. All right, talk again. Blue. I'm just going to pick up a tiny touch of blue this time, okay, and pop it in there and see what you get. So what you're going to get is a much more yellowy green than the first one. Oh, a bit more yellow needed. Bear with. When you're doing this, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to make the in-between. The, the measurements aren't as, aren't as essential, but what you're looking at is trying to make this bit here more yellowy than green, if that makes sense, for your own kind of reference. So that's cool. We've made it more yellowy than greeny on that one. This one, we want to make more bluey than greeny. So even though I've got that in there, I'm not going to mix any more in again. I might just pop a little touch of blue In that instead of starting again so what you're doing is you're finding like a little bit more extreme towards this side so there can you see now you've got more of a pine green by making it more um more blue in it than your yellow and this is where we would call this one a warm green and that one a cool green because it's the blue is a cool color yellow is a warm color and so you've got more blue in here and more yellow in that one. Right, so we'll do the same with the purple. So the purple we've got mixed in here. So if you say you want more blue in, let's take a little bit of this purple into a little bit of blue and mix that in there. Wow, gorgeous. You're going to find your favourite colours. You're going to find your favourite recipes. Note them down. Just note those down. Put a little scribble. Uh, much more blue, hardly any any um any pink in this one you could write this is your reference it doesn't have to look pretty it just has to be there for you to use again okay right now in that one we've got much more pink and hardly any blue so i'm going to take some pink out of there like that and i'm just going to do a tiny touch of blue tiniest touch just to barely tint it right see how we've taken that down there so now you've got a warm, kind of a dark, darker red, warm, purpley colour. So imagine floral painting, all these colours you've got on there. You've got this gorgeous colour, we're not done yet. So next one, we've got the oranges. We've got straight up orange in the middle. We've got an orange with a bit more yellow. So let's take some orange out there, pop a little bit more yellow and see what we've got there. Yep nice midpoint between there not quite as ready kind of scarlety red almost that one a bit more yellowy you'll find you use hardly any of the darker color to affect the lighter color when you're mixing so always take the darker color to the lighter color because you'll find you use less of the darker color than you do the light to affect a change all right so um, this one here, this orange will take a little bit out here. See, I'm just using the edge of my palette here. It doesn't even have to be the wells because it's so concentrated. And that's the beauty for stamp colouring. You're not going to do a full watercolour. These, this size and this, this, this control is fabulous. Look, all these things still there, going nowhere. Look, how cool is that? It's kind of almost like having a pen, but not. And it's just there that's keeping it in there. I just think it's a great little way to, to use it and to learn and to play. 
Um, you could even, if you wanted, you know, um, photocopy this before you do it and do a few more different colour charts and or draw out your own. It doesn't have to be pretty petal like this and make another one and make as many and vary them up. Um, so we've got two magenta, one yellow, but we're just going to do it a sort of ish. So more magenta. So this is magenta. Oh, you know what? I don't even know. If you're not sure, start again with a little bit. I think that's no, that's magenta there. I know it is. This is magenta here. So more magenta to a tiny little touch of yellow. Let's see what we get. Okay. Yes, that's right. I'm having to think then. I just, I just stop and pause and think. And that's okay. Stop and think. If Don't stop yourself if you're thinking, oh, what I'm impressed with is all these various reds we're making in between these two, not just orange. We started with a kind of orangey colour there. But look at all those reds. That I hope the camera's picking up the difference in the colour because it's very obvious on here from pink to, um, you know, if you put a little bit more pink on that, you'd still... It's just a lovely, love, really pretty different reds. And that's just mixing, just simple like that. Then what you do in here, you see where it's got green and purple and orange? Well, this is where you can start mixing browns and things. So if you take some green and then you mix it in with some purple, um, green and purple, you're going to get like a grey gorgeous grey so when you're painting foliage if you want like a eucalyptus leaf or a cooler colour take your green and pop a little bit of purple in there okay and you've got a lovely shadow grey colour there um if we say purple and orange for example i'm not going to let you play with this so purple and orange so purple take a little bit of purple and then we'll pop a little bit of orange in there purple and orange Oh, you're starting to get a brownie colour. So this is where, with a little bit more purple, a little bit less orange, you might start to get kind of a skin tone. Mm. And it's got precise measurements on here, but I'm not going to mix all these up. So it's three yellow, one magenta, one blue. And you're going to get a skin tone in that, but you literally can. You're almost there with a the skin tone with this one. Let me just show you. We'll pop a little bit, touch more purple in. I think it was that one. Was it? This one here. A little bit more that. So here, for example, look, you're thinking skin tone, okay. Darker skin tone already, we've got going there. But watch when you start adding water, and that's still that's still really, really dark. Look, now you start to see how you can get much more of a nice cheek highlight tone, a richer skin tone warmer skin tone if you want a little bit more sally pop a little bit more orange in it and you've got a different skin tone here just a tiny touch more blue have a little bit plain you'll see these are so skin tones greys are all going to be made with your with the colors that your secondary colors that you're mixing together okay and that's going to give you different browns and shades for skin tones now that would be more a one when you get it to the lighter ones that's more the color i would use for my skin tone this may be for a highlight on the skin that's how you're going to play with your color chart lovely people i hope that's given you um a little bit of um information on what that's all about and what the the society box is about well maybe um let's do one quick little extra thing let's do a little um, a little experiment with um, maybe a bit of full bleach. Let's no, let's use a picture. Let's use a picture. Let's do this. Let's use the trees and the kite. So, for example, if you wanted to have a play with this now, let's have a look. And so, in the recipe card, it'll tell you how to create a, a gradual background, a, a, a gradient. So, we'll wet the card first, like this. So, it's wet everywhere. Now, I'm going to use a, a bluey purpley colour for the sky let's use a bit of this purple like that at the top just a tiny touch and let it wash in and then maybe a bit more blue towards the horizon line um i think i've got a little bit more magenta let's pop a little bit more magenta right there so one touch more blue a little bit lighter as we get towards the bay, the bottom of the of the picture like this 
and then we can try a little bit of green at the bottom or that could be a snowy kind of scene this could be and that could be and you could even have some hills in the background if you want to do some some more distant if you pop a little bit of the green in with a bit of the blue you might suggest some hills or whatever going back there behind the trees as well so you just popping that on there and then if you've got a bit of kitchen paper which I hope I haven't left it too late you can start taking out maybe just try for bleaching it a little bit see if we're not too late with that yeah that's better we're good so a little bit of water and again these are techniques on your cards they'll tell you these techniques and this is what this is for just to pop in your thing go, okay yeah okay all right if i want to just lift it out quickly i have to be quicker that's a note to yourself um if i want it lighter i need to add a little bit of water to get me full bleaching the way i want it there so we've now got a really pretty scene with and look i'll just say how much color we've got left what and by the way all this here this here you can just make sure you put them back in the right jars that would be very not good so look if you're not sure and you're thinking oh you can't see in the thing just pop a little bit yeah that's definitely the blue that's the cyan and all of that there goes back into that there so that's it a little bit of water and your pipette squeeze it dry like this just and you'll get it nice and clear that's that back in there thank you very much no harm done all that's back in there for the next time this is a good one because it can clearly see the orange yellow straight in there look all that back to the top we've literally hardly made a dent in that little jar and we've made a color chart we've made a little tag with what's left. we could do lots of tags with what's left here you could do quite a few play with that don't throw that away once you've done your color mixing get some tags even the ones with just the backgrounds on have a little bit of a play and um and just just have fun that's what this is about but it's about taking away the mystery the mystique of color mixing of paints of it's making paints manageable it's making them play nice because i think if we've pl tried paints in the past or color mixing in the past and it's got a bit confused and then you thought you've lost your way like okay i got that but i'm not even sure how i got that well that's where the pipettes are a measurable way of mixing you can literally use this many dots to that many dots to that many dots so if you want to mix a precise skin tone you know three yellow dots one magenta dot one of the um of the cyan dot would get you the thing blue there means um cyan on that one that's what we mean for that one and that's what you've got you've sorted that's your color chart and your mixing and I hope that's given you an idea of just the start of what you can play with. We haven't even got into playing with any of this stuff yet. There. Well, imagine all these backgrounds and things. Oh, I'm going to have to imagine. Let me show you what I've got ready to play with. I've got a card. I'm going to show you how we will make this card together. Oh, with what you've got in your kit. And we've got this card here ready to put together. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's with the contents of your kit. Cool. All right. Hope that was um, informative, everyone. I hope that helps you understand the the whole purpose behind this um, particular Paper Craft Society box and um, and why I'm passionate about the contents and what it's all about. It's about teaching and learning and um, all about colouring and mixing and techniques with a water-based product and you know there's so many of them out there in the craft world whether it's ink pads reinkers um dye inks uh watercolors all same theory applies so um thanks everyone take care